Hey, what is up you guys? Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Josh and I'm a makeup artist from New York. I have a brand new video for you guys today. What is up you guys? It's been a little while. I took a break for Memorial Day. I had to take a little vacation as well. Don't kill me, but we have a new video. I don't know what I'm doing over here for you guys today. So today we're going to be doing a makeup that you can be using better. So I'm just going to give you guys a bunch of tips on a bunch of things that I see people do wrong or something that I feel like a lot of people get wrong about makeup as well. But yeah, I'm just gonna give you guys these tips so I can help you achieve that perfect makeup look that you are trying to achieve. But yeah, let's get right into it. Make sure you guys leave a comment down below what you think about this video and make sure you hit that thumbs up for that YouTube algorithm. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you aren't subscribed to my channel already and make sure you guys hit that post notification icon so you're notified every single time I drop a brand new video just like this one. But yeah, if you guys have been on my channel before, you know how much I love brushes, how much I care about brushes. So first, let's go into brushes. <laughs> first up, we have a foundation brush. So this is the Scott Barnes number 68 brush. This is just called a dual fiber foundation brush or a cream brush. I have a few more over here. This is a Morphe dual fiber brush. And then this is a BH Cosmetics dual fiber. So they're all ideally the same thing where they have these straight out hairs that go in different directions and are spread out, you see? So what I see a lot of people, a lot of people have these brushes and they'll come like in a kit or something, but they'll never use it. And the reason is they say a lot of times that it doesn't do a good job at laying down their foundation or that it leaves it patchy or that they don't know how to use it. And the mistake a lot of people tend to do is that they use this brush and they drag the product all over their face. However, you have to use this brush in two ways. First, you want to pounce, just like a beauty blender. You want to pounce the product into your skin. So today I'm just gonna be doing like half the things on my half face so you guys can see, right? Okay. Anyways, I'm gonna go in with the Bobbi Brown Skin Long Weightless Wear Foundation. So I'm just gonna go in with a little so you guys can see, but you want to pounce the product into the skin. So you see how I'm not dragging, I am pouncing the brush on my skin right now. Cause once you start dragging like this, look how I leave streaks down here. You see that you can already tell the streaks going down here. You want to pounce, cause the pounce gives a more seamless finish and it blends it into the skin, almost like a beauty blender, you know? But once you do that pounce, and you want to take your time with it, because it really takes time to work it in. This is why I say a brush is better, however, because a brush, you can really, really work that product into the face. Now, once it's completely laid down, then what you can do is take the brush and finish it off. You know, if you need to drag it to some spots, that's no problem, because the foundation has already dried down into your skin, and then you can just pat and finish it off again and it gives your skin this really 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 nice finish as opposed to having nothing on the other side even though literally it looks like the same because i'm telling you this foundation is perfect for my skin <laughs> but that was just the first tip i wanted to do if you use a beauty blender you already know this because i've said it in my other videos you do not want to drag a beauty blender you want to pounce with the beauty blender and that goes for the brush as well not to say you can't ever drag, but if you do, it's towards the end when the product has already laid itself down. And I really freaking love this foundation. I always forget. I'm not gonna lie, doing YouTube is a little difficult sometimes because I'm not like a rich YouTuber, so I just don't have products coming in like PR and like new products coming in all the time. So I have to find another way to keep you guys entertained while making content at the same time, which is a little difficult because I get blocked sometimes but i made this video today anyways next brush i take forever to talk is this brush so this is just a morphe e4 but this is an angled contour brush and this is the brush that i see people make the biggest mistake with so what people tend to do is they take this brush right and when they're using it right here 
they tend to go like this. They tend to go back and forth with it, which you're not supposed to do because this brush is angled for a reason. This brush is angled to buff products out, up and out. You can do it like this as well, down, but I don't recommend it because when you blend down, you create harsh lines on your face. So you want to blend up and out, buff, when you use an angled contour brush. Up and out, never forget that. Up and out. That's how you use one of these brushes. Now the next brush is a Morphe M124. This is just a normal synthetic eyeshadow brush. Most of you will have one of these or multiple of these. What I see people do wrong with this is they'll go in with a lot of color like a blue or red or yellow and they will start to drag the brush on their eyelid. And you don't want to drag the product because this brush is not meant to blend or distribute product evenly. This brush is meant to pack on and increase color payoff of an eyeshadow. So you want to pack color onto this brush and then pack that color on where you want the color concentrated on your lid. Once you do that fully wherever you want that color, then you can take a blending brush. I apologize. For example, like my Scott Barnes, my Scott Barnes number 62 brush is a blending brush right here. Then you can take a blending brush and go ahead and blend. But you never want to drag or blend out with this brush because it will give you uneven color distribution and it will just be patchy. You only want to use this to drag something if you are using like a cream or a, a cream glitter or something like that, but never any dry shadows. Next, we have contour, highlight, blush, and bronzer. So the biggest problem that I see with people with these four components of their makeup is that they do not layer them correctly so it inherently creates a muddy and dirty look on the side of their face as they aren't doing them in the correct order nor in the correct spots so i just want to help clarify i guess so we're just gonna do it here and that last brush the, the angle contour brush that i never use it's funny i took it out so first we're gonna go in with a contour so you want to concentrate your contour right here where so you know how they say make the fish face like they say that because when you do that right here you can see where your bone is for your face and when you're contouring what we're doing is accentuating that right there so what you want to do is you really want to concentrate here the color of the contour and that's why they really really bring it down here you never want your contour all the way up here because this is where your highlight goes and this is where your blush goes and this is where your contour goes and sorry this is where your bronzer goes and this is where your contour goes so i kind of do it with the line of the ear that's how i remember it it's always kind of coming right here right see what i'm saying okay so I'm going to go in with the Anastasia Contour Kit. Then I'm just going to take the product and I'm going to concentrate the color right where I want to contour, right there. And then I'm just going to buff it out. You see how I'm creating that dimension? I'm creating a shadow. So you don't want it to be red. You want to use a contour color that is a grayish tone. So you see this color comes up grayish on me because you are creating a shadow. You are creating a shade. So you do not want to use something that is red pigmented because that would be more of a bronzer, which is bringing warmth to the skin. If you watch my videos, you will notice that I don't really contour much of the time. Um, I don't really need to contour. <laughs> it 
my, my things are already really really defined as I tell like I'm not contoured on this side and it kind of looks very similar so I don't really tend to go in I like bronzer that's more my thing because I just like to bring warmth to the skin but people who do need to contour you know it's good to see here how to contour and if you want to see with that angled brush I'll just go in Next, we're gonna put the bronzer on top of the contour to bring warmth to the skin. So I use my Scott Barnes number 67 brush. This is the good face brush. So it's just a really big fluffy brush. And I go in with my Marc Jacobs bronzer in the shade Tantalize or some shit like that. And I just go in with this brush and I stamp the product and I start working back and forth. So like I said, over the contour. So now that's the bronze over my skin and that as you can tell has just brought in a little bit of warmth. It might be a little difficult to tell my skin because I'm already really really orange and really really brown kind of a mix and you know golden and stuff so it's kind of difficult. That's why I was really excited to get this because it's difficult to find bronzers for my skin tone but if you guys know any drop some in the comments down below. <laughs> Next we're gonna go into blush. Your blush is going to go on top of the bronzer, but not over the contour, if that makes sense. So I'll demonstrate here. So I'm just going to go in with my Scott Barnes number 64 brush. This is a little less of a traditional blush brush. This is something I have just gotten used to using, actually, since I've picked it up. I actually really, really like how this blush works, but I'll go in with a traditional blush brush as well to show. So this was my favorite blush brush before I got this one. So this is just a BH Cosmetics blush brush, almost. Not a blush brush, you know, like a buffing brush, but it's used for blush. So this one you would just take in and you would just work right here. So remember, we put the contour here, then we put the bronzer over the contour. Now we're gonna put the blush over the bronzer, but not over the contour. So if you were using this brush, you would put the blush right here. So now, my new brush, what I used to like to do is stamp and then blend, which is no different with my new brush. However, just how it works and the shape is a little foreign to some people. <laughs> but you, I'm just going to dip into Sweet Cheeks and then I'm just going to tap it on. I'm going to place the blush where I want it, which are the high points of my cheek. And then once I've done that, I'm going to blend it out. Ah, oh, freaking love this blush and how it looks. And that, as you can tell, looks perfect. If you want, obviously you could blend out for a more airbrush look. You could blend for ages if you wanted to. <laughs> so don't get too stuck up on it, but I think it already looks really, really nice. And of course, if you want it to look more natural, you can go in with a cream blush because that will look really, really natural. Highlighter cannot touch the contour or the bronzer that's how it gets muddy so you have to keep it away from both of those so when you go in with the highlight highlight is going at the highest highest point it is going on top of the blush but nowhere near these other so we went contour bronzer blush highlight now on the top top of the cheekbone i'm gonna go in with the jacqueline cosmetics highlighter and I'm gonna go in with the shade Ice, and I'm gonna take my Scott Barnes number 66 brush. Now this is almost like a deeper dense half fan brush, you can say. This is another brush that is very different, but I've been loving for my makeup. It's amazing as a highlighting brush. 
However, it works the same for a Morphe M105 or either brush. You want to slightly and make sure when you're doing your highlight, you are at the end of the brush as you want little pressure. Holding your brush at the end like this gives you light pressure while holding the brush over here gives you a lot. If you were to go in with your highlight with a brush like this, it would give you so much color and it would look not good. <laughs> so you want to use it down here so it looks really blended and really light and really natural. You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to go in with ice and I'm going to go at the top of the cheekbone. And there you go. I'm just going to blend that out a little bit. Oh, I freaking love this highlighter. But yeah, that's where you want to create this ombre where you see my contour, my bronzer, my blush, and my highlight. And you can still see all of them, but they look nice. They don't look muddy. And if I were to look at you down like this, see? Next, primer. So primer is another thing that a lot of people have been using recently now. And the thing is that you have to know your skin to know how to prime your face. So if you have oily skin, for example, you don't want to go into with too much oil based products because it's going to create an excess of product and it's going to create patchy areas for your makeup where it won't blend or it's starting to separate or stuff like that. Or if you have really dry skin, you really need to pack your skin with moisture so that the makeup you're wearing so it can last however long that is you want it to last. If you don't know your skin and you're not paying attention to it for things like this, then when you put on your makeup, you know it's not going to do exactly what you want and you're going to have to work harder to achieve what you're looking for. See what I'm saying? And now my last tip, my last, last tip. When you guys put on lip gloss, ready? Most of you guys just put on lip gloss like this. You guys just take it, right? And boom. You put lip gloss on, right? You're not wrong. That's how you put on lip gloss. However, if you take the applicator and you just hit right at the tip of your lips, like right at the ridge, I'll show you guys on camera. It creates a super shine because of the way the edges of your lips pop out. So I've just taken the product and I've put it right you see how it's super shiny now just the line of my lip is like super reflective and you see that outline now so a lot of people tend to just go in the middle and then blend it out but if you take the highlight the tip of it and just boom hit the cupid's bow in the sides super super lip highlight <laughs> anyways if you guys like this one make sure to keep leave a comment down below so that I can make more videos like this and I'll give you guys more of my tips. I'll just give them out for free. You know, this is what you come here for. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys check out Dick of the Podcast, my podcast. There's a brand new episode every single week when you guys are watching this. The episode this week will be Dick of the One About Jobs. So we talk about the jobs we had in the past and the jobs we currently have now it was a very very good episode so make sure you guys check that out the link will be in the description down below and make sure you guys sign up for Deek of the merch it will be launching in just two weeks away make sure to sign up at Deek of the merch.com for 20 percent off on your first purchase i'll catch you guys in the next one peace